What is up? What is going on, everybody? Um, I apologize for this being a day late, but I am back with the Mariners post-game recap for yesterday's game. The Mariners dropped it 7-3 to the Cardinals. Um, didn't get home till late last night. Didn't want to upload it at midnight, so I figured I'd wait till today, especially with the Mariners having a day off today. Um, it didn't end up being any conflict or any problem to put this video up today and still give you guys plenty of time before the next game to watch. Should have a video up later today, too. I'm going to preview the series against the Phillies upcoming. Um, as you can tell by the title, it, deep breaths. It, it, nothing about this loss is, is that big of a deal on the surface of it. Um, the Mariners took two out of three from the Cardinals. They had a five and four homestand. Despite being swept by the Brewers, they still finish up with a pretty good homestand. And they're six and four in their last ten. If the Mariners go six and four, for every set of 10 games the rest of the way, I think they win like 92 or 93 games. So they are going to be fine, or it, everything that's happened recently is fine. There's nothing about winning two out of three against the Cardinals is bad. Let's flip this result with Friday, and let's say yesterday's game was Friday, Saturday's game was Saturday, and then Friday's game was yesterday, and we'd all be fine. Everyone would be okay, and there'd be no issues. Now, with that said, while the loss on its own I don't think means a whole heck of a lot, I think the Cardinals are a good team. I think when the season is all said and done, they're going to win their division. Um, there's just too much good hitters, and I think the pitching, while it's struggled so far this year, I do think that it's got enough to get them through, and they'll probably make a move somewhere as well to maybe uh, bolster that staff a little bit. Um, so anyways, let's talk about the game itself. I, I don't have the box score, but I'm actually not going to go super play-by-play-ish on this game. Um, it happened yesterday. If you watched it, you watched it. Go back and see the highlights. There is a couple things I want to touch on, and obviously the most... Well, let's talk about some of the positives first. It's Jared Kalanick, another opposite field home run. Um, he continues to rake. And some of those opposite field home runs, which what's great about them, I mean, they don't look like they're going out when he makes contact and they just carry and carry uh, just shows you how much real power he has to Oscar Hernandez to hit a couple home runs like that where it just doesn't look like he gets it all but that ball just pops off his bat so that's a great sign um, Colton Wong did have three hits he did have a bit of a defensive misplay um, but that's good to see his offense maybe getting going uh, Julio had a couple of walks Ty France had a two RBI single um, and then the bullpen did a pretty good job Penn Murphy uh, Gabe Spire, Castillo gave up the home run, but actually I thought he looked sharper yesterday um, than he had in previous outings. And I don't remember who Sacito pitched the ninth, and you know, he was fine. Let's move on to kind of the elephant in the room for the Mariners right now, and that's Chris Flexen. That's going to be the guy that everyone's talking about, everyone wants to see gone, and what do the Mariners need to do to either get better or move on, or what, what needs to happen. First and foremost, the Mariners need Robbie Ray back in the rotation. That's the most important thing this team needs. I think there was a perception of Robbie Ray, especially coming off the Cy Young in 2021, that he wasn't that great last year. And I think a lot of it had to do with a really poor playoff start in Toronto, um, a poor start to start the season. He struggled the first couple months, and then giving up the walk-off to Alvarez in Game 1 of the ALDS. So I think there's sort of this perception that Robbie Ray wasn't that great last year, and while he certainly wasn't Cy Young caliber good, he was fine. He was a good pitcher last year. His strikeouts were good. And he had a couple months stretch before they got Castillo where he was on a roll. He was a good pitcher last year. There was nothing wrong with Robbie Ray. He wasn't likely to repeat that Cy Young season. Um, he was a solid number two, number three pitcher last year. Probably more of a number two with the strikeout stuff he has. He has that ability to sort of get out of situations because he's got the good strikeout stuff. And they miss him. They need him back. Chris Flexen has started four games. And there's probably two that if Robbie Ray was here, this team is maybe 12 and 10, at least 11 and 11. I think the Cubs game, I'm pretty certain Robbie Ray gets them through five innings in that one. And yesterday, now, they were up 3 to 2, the Mariners. Like, they were up 9 nothing, and the Cardinals just charged back. They had a small lead. Robbie Ray may have given that up, but maybe it's four to three, and the offense is able to battle back and get in this game. Um, so yeah, this team misses Robbie Ray. That's one of the simplest solutions here. They need to get him back. 
I don't know with Robbie Ray how long it's going to be. Um, elbow injuries are always concerning and stuff like that because you think Tommy John, and now it looks like they've avoided that. But, you know, obviously it's at least a month. We know that. That would put it into early May. And he's going to have to make some rehab starts, at least two or three, just to sort of get the arm strength back up, especially since – you know, he hadn't pitched a lot this season, just coming out of spring training. So they're going to need, you're probably looking at mid to late May before Robbie Ray is back in the rotation. And it could always be longer. Injuries linger, you know. I, I, I would say you're probably looking at the best bet is three weeks, something like that, before Robbie Ray is back. So you're going to need to cover five more starts, maybe. Three to five more starts of Robbie Ray in this rotation. And... You know, you, you got to find out what it's going to be, you know, who it's going to be to do that. There's not a lot of options outside of Chris Flexen to make these spot starts. And that's the other thing. It's just not something that the Mariners have a lot of depth with. Um, unfortunately for them, and this isn't a problem. This isn't Jerry DePoto or Justin Hollander's fault. Here's the thing. Going into the season, Flexen was probably, you would consider, about as good of a sixth starter as you can have. There were rumors of him being traded this offseason. The Mariners wanted to keep him to help the pitching depth, or they just didn't get an offer that they felt was good enough to pull the trigger on. Flexen was really good in 2021. He was a perfect middle of the rotation guy. Um, he wasn't as good last year, but he was certainly back-end quality. There was a lot of people, and some rightfully so. I was not one of them, but there were a lot of people that wanted Chris Flexen in the rotation over Marco. And, and you could see where they were coming from on it. Again, I preferred Marco, but I, I get it. I know where people were coming from on that. Um... So you had to figure that's about as good as you can have for a six starter. And listen, for people getting on DePoto and Hollander for, oh, this team should have had more depth, I don't know what you wanted them to do. There are not a lot of great pitchers sitting around that want to be number seven starters that sit in AAA. You know who those guys are? They're Tommy Malone's. They're, um, you know, I'm trying to think of other guys that would make sense for that. They're... Um, Blake Bevins of the world, guys like that. That's who, you know, sits in your AAA, kind of the 4A pitchers is what you would call them. That They're better than AAA, but they're kind of eh, in the majors. You weren't going to be able to sign Jacob deGrom and stick him for depth in Tacoma for three months just in case something happened. So no matter who you were looking for to fill that other spot or who else you wanted as depth, they were all going to be kind of the same pitcher. They're all going to be in that sort of, Flexen, Malone, you know, McCacken um, type pitchers for depth. That's just how it is. Um, so there's nothing the front office could have done. The other thing is the prospects have graduated. There is not George Kirby or Logan Gilbert that's knocking on the door, or even Matt Brash, who started the season in the rotation last year. The, the, the major pitching prospects last couple of years have all graduated to the big league level. Emerson Hancock, Bryce Miller, they're, I don't think they're quite, the, Hancock for sure, um, not ready. Bryce Miller, I, I know some people are claim, clamoring for it, but I still think you're looking, that would have to be, I think, post-All-Star break would be the earliest for me that I would probably look at doing something like that. So you don't have the guys just knocking on the door right away. And it may be the next year for those guys too. Um, you're still a year or so away from them maybe being real solid contributors to your rotation. So you're going to need guys like Chris Flexen, McCacken, Tommy Malone to fill those voids, whoever it may be. Listen, if the Mariners DFA'd Flexen tomorrow, I wouldn't bat much of an eye on it. That's kind of a shame because I think he did have some trade value before the season. He just doesn't now. I mean, you could maybe, maybe you could send him to some team that is just so desperate for pitching depth and get cash considerations in return. But if you're the Mariners, that doesn't make a lot of sense either because you right now kind of need the pitching depth with Robbie Ray out. So you're better off keeping Flexen and hope some of the value um, comes back. In terms of replacements, like you talked about, Hancock, Bryce Miller, I don't think those are your options right now. I think that's much later down the road. Who are your options to replace him? McCacken? I, I mean, yeah, I think McCacken would be better than the ADRA Flexen's giving you so far. But going forward... I wouldn't project McCacken to be better than Flexen. I, I wouldn't. Um, Tommy Malone, I'm, who's technically not even back on the roster, and he had to be DFA'd um, to make room. I'm sure they're going to pass him through waivers. I'm sure that was one of the agreements. Like, hey, we're going to DFA you after your start, and we're going to get you back in the system. 
Sure. Like, yeah, if they tomorrow said Malone's up making the starts now, you know, if he's back and Flexen's going out, whatever. I wouldn't say that's a wrong decision necessarily at this point. But do you really think going forward that, like, these guys are all going to be that much different than each other? Not really. They're all fifth starters. They're all back-end guys. Now, I will say this. Flexen has looked really bad. It's not just the numbers for Chris Flexen. The numbers are bad. The eye test is not good either. I mean, you don't need FIP or XFIP to tell you Chris Flexen hasn't been good. I don't care if his FIP and XFIP are good. They're, they're not. But I don't care if his secondary numbers are good. The eye test, he ain't passing it. Um, the, the, the stuff is flat. The breaking pitches aren't fooling anybody. He's being hit hard. He's, I wouldn't say his command is awful, but it's not plus plus. You know, and if your stuff isn't that great, you need that plus plus command. You can't be walking anybody. You better just be, at the very least, pumping strikes in there. And he's not really doing that either. So his pitches look flat. Um, and, and even some of the ways he got out of innings has been lucky. He got that double play that Julio turned from center field last uh, last night or yesterday afternoon. So even some of the outs he's getting haven't been necessarily sustainable. Now, Colton Wong did botch a possible double play yesterday as my light keeps flickering in and out. Um, and after that, it was um, who hit the home run? Gorman? Gorman hit the home run? I don't remember. Um, whatever, it doesn't matter for the Mariners side of it. Yeah, Flexen should have been out of the inning fine, but he's still got a pitch. I, I hate when errors get blamed for them, the pitcher proceeding to give up multiple runs. Yes, the pitcher should have been out of the inning. And yes, would I give Luis Castillo a pass on it? Sure. Would I give Logan Gilbert and George Kirby a pass for it? Yeah. Chris Flexen doesn't get a pass yet this year. He has not earned it. 2021 Flexen, I'd give him a pass. I'm not giving Chris Flexen a pass right now. He has not been good enough to say he would have gotten out, he should have gotten out of the inning. It was an error behind him or a, a misplay. It shouldn't have happened, but it did. You've got to go get outs. That's going to happen to every pitcher in baseball. Every pitcher in baseball is going to have to, at some point, get four outs in an inning. Now, the Cardinals are a really good offense, so it certainly makes it harder, but that's nothing new. There's every single starting pitcher in baseball, relief pitcher starter at some point this year, is going to have to work to get an extra out because the defense is going to let him down. It sucks, and Colton Wong should have made the play, but it happens. It's still two outs. It wasn't like it would have been a double play. It would have been a double play, but it wouldn't have been like, it wasn't first and second, nobody out, turn two, and they threw the ball away, and now the bases are loaded, nobody out, and you go from two outs to zero. It was one more out he just had to get, and he couldn't get it. So, yeah, shame on Colton Wong. It, it can be both their faults, but Chris Flexen, as I dropped something there, Chris Flexen gave up the runs. A end of story. So he deserves blame for it as well. Now, in, in Flexen's defense, he started four games. He was okay in two of them. He wasn't terrible against Milwaukee last time out. The early barrage of runs made it look worse than it was, but he was overall fine. He was actually pretty decent against the Angels in his first spot start. Um, and he's had two really bad ones. And they've been amplified. The Cubs game because they had the big lead, which they blew. And then yesterday, because I think they had a chance for the sweep, and it's it's just getting noticed a lot more. And the rest of the pitching has been pretty good. So Flexen isn't getting sort of that benefit of, they're all terrible, and throw them into, you know, all into one. Flexen's been, hands down, the worst of the bunch. The, like I said, though, the issue is that there really isn't anybody that is going to come up. Like I said, George Kirby isn't sitting there like he was last year, ready to come up. And take the reins. These guys aren't quite ready yet. And if you had to ask me now, maybe Flexen's hurt. I wouldn't be shocked if there's like an injury list stint or something. Um, and if that's the case, yeah, give me McCack and give me Malone. They're going to be better if he's hurt. But if Flexen is healthy and everything else checks out, I, I, I mean, Flexen, Malone, McCack, I, I, I mean, we're, we're grasping at straws at that point. Like, what is it that you? I, I mean, if you think McCack and Malone are going to be that much better, I, I'm going to tell you they're not going to be. That doesn't mean they can't be effective. I know you're probably sitting there, you're going, well, Jay, man, that they, they wouldn't have an ADRA. And yeah, if we want to go back to the past, sure. I think McCacken and Malone would have pitched better in those starts. But going forward, projecting the rest of the season, I'd actually be willing to bet Flexen probably projects to be a little bit better than those guys. It is what it is. You need him to pitch better, and that's what it comes down to. And then it goes, let's turn it all the way around and go back to what I said in the beginning. They need Robbie Ray back. That is, now that is an option 
that is much better. That is a true improvement over Chris Flexen, over Malone, over McCacken. And that's where I go back to saying Robbie Ray is good. You know what I mean? He is a good pitcher. Do I think he's going to win the Cy Young? No, but I think he's a solid top-end rotation starting pitcher. That is a massive improvement for what this team is running out right now. So yeah, that's about it for that. I kind of want to go on a little bit of a rant, just talk about that, because I see that conversation sort of dominating Twitter and everything like that. Take a deep breath, guys. I, it stinks that they couldn't have gotten back to 500, and it would have been nice because they could have, you know, you go into Philly on Tuesday, and if you could win that game, you're now over 500. So essentially, you, you find a way yes, to yesterday, and you're a one-game winning streak away from being over 500. Now, you need to win three in a row to get over 500. So from that aspect... Yeah, the loss stinks. Five and four homestand, six and four in their last ten. Um, again, if they go six and four for every stretch of ten games, they're going to be fine. This team was two and five. They are eight and seven since then. They've actually been playing pretty decent ball. Now those seven games count. Again, I'm not dismissing it, but they are playing better baseball. The Cardinals are a good team. Don't let the record fool you. And the pitching staff has some questions. They, they've got some question marks there. But that's a good baseball team. It was going to be really hard to sweep them. Yeah, it would have been nice to get one against the Brewers. I don't doubt that. Um, I don't deny that, sorry. But it is what it is. It was a good, pretty good homestand um, and a good series for the Mariners to get two out of three. So take a deep breath. They're playing better ball. They are. It's just that two and five start that's kind of sticking out. Now they have a tough road trip here. I don't know all of it, Norm. I know they got Philly, Toronto, Houston, and... Oakland? No, that can't be a four. Is it a four city road trip? I think it's a three city. I think it's, I, I don't know. But that's, you know what? That's not the road trip. That's their next games. Excuse me. And Texas in there too. That's not just the road trip. But you got Philly, who is kind of been similar to the Mariners so far this year. Like a little bit of a slow start, but playing better. Toronto's a good team. We know Houston. Um, Texas is off to a great start. Oakland's bad, but, you know, you never know. So the Mariners have some work to do here. If they can come out of that stretch at 500, I will sign up for it. So you can hold me to that. If I say something after this stretch of games, I'm like, oh, they should have done this. I will be more than happy if they exit that stretch of games at 500. That is totally fine. So yeah, that, that's all I've got. We'll see if any roster moves happen today with the day off. Wouldn't shock me if Taylor Trammell is back here soon. Um, he's heating up and swinging a good bat in AAA. I can see Tommy LaStella going away and Taylor Trammell coming up. Um, in terms of flexing, the only thing I could see is maybe like some injury thing that they find and put him on the IL. But again, Macaac and Malone, they need Robbie Ray back. That's the key for this team. Thank you all for watching. Hit the like button. Hit the sub button. I'll be back later today with a series preview for the Mariners and the Fighting Phils. Um, so let me know what you guys think. Let me know what your thoughts are on the rotation. I will see you guys next time. And as always, go Mariners. Peace.